the per unit system. Consider the following hypothetical situation. In the mythical remote republic, renting a one-bedroom apartment costs $100 a month. In Vancouver, renting a one-bedroom apartment is about $1,500 a month. Where is it cheaper for a local inhabitant to rent an apartment? How could we compare? It is easier to compare if we use a reasonable reference, perhaps the minimum monthly wage in each country. In Canada, the minimum salary is about $1,700 a month. In the mythical remote republic, the minimum salary is $15 a month. Divide in each country the rent by the salary and we get the per unit cost of renting in each country. In Canada, 89% or 0.89 per unit in the mythical remote republic 200 percent or two per unit in electrical engineering we use the per unit system to compare voltages and currents and power and impedances so instead of saying that such and such current is 2300 amperes we say instead things like the current is 1.1 in per unit that is 1.1 times the reference chosen for currents. The reference is also called the base current or base amps. But the question is, how do we choose the reference values for volts, amps, watts, and ohms? The base values? How? How are we going to do that? We will explore two scenarios. In a transformer, it makes sense to use the rated values of the transformer, as we shall see soon in the power system well, we will cross that bridge when we get to it. Let's revisit the rated values of a transformer. The rated volts on the high side, the rated volts on the low side, and third, the rated power. What about rated currents and rated ohms? We shall see that those can be derived from the first three. Let's have a look at the nameplate of a three-phase transformer. Over here, we see the rated power, the rated voltage for the low side, the rated voltage for the high side. Yes, because it's a three-phase transformer, those voltages are line-to-line -line for the low side, and both line-to-line -line and line-to-neutral for the high side. You see here that the primary is connected in a delta and the secondary in a star. But let's not dwell on that. Instead, let's think how to compute the rated currents of the primary and the secondary. They are computed by dividing the total three-phase rated power by rule three times the line-to-line -line rated voltage both of the primary and of the secondary. Let's consider a specific single-phase transformer. It is rated for 12 kilovolts on the high side and 120 volts on the low side and can transfer 48 kilovolt amperes its rated power let's compute the rated currents both on the high and the voltage side divide the rated power by the rated voltage and we get that the rated current of the primary is 4 amperes and the rated current of the secondary 400 amperes for sure it hasn't escaped you that we used only three parameters, two voltages and one power to compute all the others. Let me apply the full rated voltage to the primary of this transformer, 20 kilovolts. Of course, the rated voltage will appear on the secondary, 120 volts. But if instead of volts we represent each one of those voltages in percent, we can say that we're applying 100% to the primary and that we're getting a hundred percent or the secondary or in per unit we're applying one per unit and we're getting one per unit simple huh let's try again this time with 80 percent of the rated voltage we apply 9.6 kilovolts to the primary and we get in the secondary what 96 volts which is 80 percent of the rated voltage of the secondary so we apply 80% on the primary and we get 80% on the secondary. Or in per unit, we apply 0.8 and we get 0.8. We can repeat it for a good measure a third time, applying 50% of the rated voltage. Of course, we get 50% of the secondary. 
What about currents? For currents, if we feed the rated current to the primary, 4 amps, we get the rated current of the secondary, 400 amps. That is, we feed 100% of the current in the primary and we get 100% of the current in the secondary. Or if you will, if we use per unit, we feed 1 per unit, we get 1 per unit. You know that I will repeat this experiment two more times, right? Feeding 80% of the rated current, that is 0 0.8 in per unit, and then feeding 50% of the rated current in per unit, and it holds. Conclusions. If we represent voltages and currents in percent or in per unit, we do not need the, the ideal transformer linking both sides. This is no minor gain when we need to solve a national electric power grid that has thousands of transformers in it, or even in a humbler exam type of circuit with three or four transformers. It isn't. Let's summarize. When we use a per unit system, ideal transformers in models disappear. Say so what? If, if, if we represent voltages and currents in per unit, with respect to the rated values of each side, we rate ourselves of the ideal transformers in the models of the network. Hmm, that's nice. What about power? What about power? Power is also given in per unit. If we apply a voltage of 1 per unit to a load, and the load absorbs a current of 1 per unit, is because that load is absorbing an apparent power of 1 per unit. That means that the base power is base volts by base amps. And what about impedances? Think of it this way. How do we define the base for ohms? If we apply a 1 per unit voltage to an impedance, and the current that flows is 1 per unit, then whatever ohms that impedance has is 1 per unit. That's how we compute that. So we divide the base of volts by the base amps. But the base amps, remember, that is the base power divided by the base volts. If we substitute in the first expression, we get that the base ohms is the base volt squared divided by the base power. Let's summarize this in a transformer. We choose the rated power as the base power, that is the 1 per unit. We choose the rated volts of each side as base values for the primary and the secondary, right? And then we compute the rated amps for each side in this way. And what about ohms? We can compute the base ohms this way. We divide the base volts by the base amps, or more frequently, we divide the square of the base volts by the power base. What about a power system? Well, let's consider this power system. We begin by defining what is a galvanic area. It is a part of the circuit that is not separated by the magnetic field of a transformer, like this one. How many galvanic areas you see in that circuit? Four, right? That one, a second, a third, and of course the big one in the middle. Four galvanic areas. We will use one power base for all the system. It is customary in America to use 100 megavolt amperes as the base for power in the, in the power system. And for each one of the galvanic areas, we choose the rated volts as the base for voltage. VB1, VB2, VB3, and VB4. And then we compute what is the rated current in each one of those zones in each area. And then we compute what are the base ohms in each one of them. A transformer has two galvanic areas, a power system many more so. In a power system, let's summarize, we choose one base power for the entire system. For each galvanically connected section, we choose a different base voltage, which usually is the rated voltage of that section. For each galvanically connected section, we compute the base current and we compute the base ohms as well. Tutorial time. Let's have one transformer. It is a single phase transformer. It is a distribution transformer that goes from 20,000 volts to 480 volts at 60 hertz. It is good for 20 kVA. It's a small transformer. It's good probably to feed a one residential unit. We're given the open circuit test data and the short circuit test data measured on the right sides according to the definitions of the previous movie. 
Let's work with the open circuit test. Was measured on the low voltage side and we get 480, 1.6 amps and 305 watts. We compute the equivalent core losses resistor and we compute the magnetization reactance as well. We've done that, that's why I'm going quickly over this. Those values, of course, are on the low voltage side. Let me work with the short circuit test and we fast forward. We say the short circuit resistance is 260 ohms and the short circuit reactance is 1100 ohms. Of course, those are on the high voltage side. Let me draw the equivalent model of the transformer, this one. There we have an ideal transformer with a nominal ratio, 20,000 to 480. And I write what is short circuit resistance on the high voltage side. The short circuit reactance also on the high voltage side. And on the low voltage side, we have the equivalent core losses resistor and the magnetization reactance. Let's use the per unit system. We split that transformer in two galvanic areas. And in each one of them, we will share the same base for power, 20 kilovolt amperes, the rated power of the transformer. The rated voltage of each galvanic area is the rated voltage, 20 kilovolts on the high side, 480 volts on the low side. And we compute immediately what is the rated current on each zone, 1 amp and 41.67 amperes. And finally, what are the base ohms? The base ohms on the high side, 20 kilovolts, and the base ohms on the low side, 11.52 ohms. Allow me to write those two values to the top and uh, let's compute all of those resistances and reactances in per unit. The short circuit resistance in per unit is 0 0.013 per unit. The short circuit reactance 0 0.055 per unit. And on the right hand side, we refer to the equivalent core losses resistor in per unit 65.5 per unit and the magnetization reactance 28 per unit. Let me draw the circuit again. What's missing? The transformer is missing because it's there no more. It's per unit, right? We write all those values. This model and this model, both of them are as accurate or inaccurate as the other one. So they are, they are good enough. Sometimes I prefer to use this one. Sometimes I prefer to use this other one, which is the one I will use right now in the next part. Regulation. Regulations in per unit in Canada and in the U.S., we compute the regulation of a transformer this way. We measure what's the voltage on the terminals of the transformer when it's fully loaded. It is feeding its rated power. And then we disconnect the load and we measure the voltage on the terminals now that it's, it's um, unloaded, it's not loaded. We find the difference and we find the percent difference between both and that is the regulation. What gives? Well, we compare that difference with a full um, load of voltage, but that is in Canada in, in, and the, but that is in Canada and in the U.S. In Europe, the same difference is compared to the no load of voltage. So that's why the same transformer would have different regulations across the Atlantic. We compare with against the full load in 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 America and against the no load in Europe. Let's have an example. In a certain situation, the low load voltage is 240 with 17 degrees, and the full load uh, voltage is 235 with 76 degrees. Observe that we do not care for the phases. We compare only magnitudes of voltages, what a voltmeter would read only. So in this case, we say in America, the regulation is 240 minus 235 with respect to 235. That is... 2.13%. In Europe, the same situation is quantified as 2.08%. You notice that the regulation, of course, depends on the power factor of the load. Know that the voltage regulation has to do always with the drop from a full load to no load, both sides of the Atlantic. When we drop from some load to a no load situation, what we're getting is the voltage drop, not the regulation. The formula is similar, though. If the load is capacitive, 
it is possible that the full load voltage is higher than the no load voltage and then the regulation would be negative. Observe that the voltage regulation cares about the difference in magnitudes of the two voltages, not about the vector differences. If this is the voltage at full load and this is the voltage at no load, we do not care for this vector difference. We don't. What we care is for the difference in magnitudes at this distance OY. That is the one we use. In this case, even though there is a vector difference between the no load and the full load voltage, the difference in magnitude is zero and the regulation is, is zero. Let's compute the regulation in this situation. We're told, find the regulation in Canada for a load that has an inductive power factor of zero 0.7. Good, that is the load. The voltage at the load is one in per unit. You say, hey, wait a second, why one? It's the customer. We need to keep the customer happy. So we provide the rated voltage to the customer, one. And the current is one because the uh, transformer is fully loaded. And the power factor is 0 0.7, so the phase of that um, current is negative. The arc cosine of 0 0.7, you say, how is that? I am assuming that the voltage is the reference for phase at 0 degrees. So that's why the phase of the current is lagging its inductive by the arc cosine of 0 0.7, the arc cosine of the power factor. And now we can compute the no load voltage, of course. There you go. The no load voltage is 1 plus a drop in that impedance, the short circuit impedance in per unit. Do the computation and you get that the no load voltage is 1.049 with an angle. We don't care for the angle, you know that. The regulation will be 1 minus that will be 0 0.049 divided by 1 in America in percent, that is 4.9% in Europe, divided by 1.049, that would be 4.67%. In class, I will ask you, my students, at what power factor is the regulation of this transformer is zero. Now we end this with a computation of the efficiency of that transformer feeding a full load at a power factor of 0 0.7 inductive. The condition is exactly the same one we had before. Let's um, compute the losses in the transformer. The copper losses are losses up here in the short circuit resistance, that is a 1 square, that is a current in per unit, multiplied by the resistance, 0 0.013. That is the power losses. And the copper is 0 0.013 in per unit. And what are the core losses? And that is a voltage square, 1.049 square, divided by 65.54. The power losses in the core is 0 0.017 per unit. Add them up, and we have what is the input power. So what is the output power? The output power is 1 times 1, that would be the parent power, 1. But because the power factor is 0.7, multiply that 0.7, and we get that the active output power is 0.7 in per unit. That is the output. The input is 0.7 plus the losses. The efficiency will be 95.89%. And that is all, my friends. So this is all for tonight, and I hope to meet with you all in the next movie.